Claire hummed to herself as she looked in the mirror, dragging a silver brush through her long platinum blonde hair. If her reflection looked pleased with herself, it was because she was. The announcement of Swan Lake had just been made, along with who had gotten what role. As one of the best dancers in the corps, Claire had managed to bag the role of Audette. It was a demanding one, but any of the other ballerinas would have killed for it. It helped that the director was very fond of her in particular, but Claire knew she had the ability to back up her boasting. After all, was it really bragging or was it just her stating simple facts? Claire was getting ready to go for a rare dinner out with some friends to celebrate her good news when she heard a sound and paused, listening. Someone was crying somewhere. Crying wasn't unusual in the corps de ballet. A lot of the junior ballerinas were young girls and often homesick or got picked on by the other girls. The choice was usually either to toughen up or leave. Claire chose not to remember those long, lonely nights when she was smaller, crying into her pillow to not wake her dorm mates and wishing she could go home but not daring to admit it. Not after her parents had scrimped and saved to send her there. But the crying sounded different from usual. Claire had heard enough of it to know that. It wasn't the whining sobs of a young girl or the muffled weeping of someone exhausted from constant rehearsals. As she listened, she could make out somebody speaking softly over the sobbing. This, above all else, made goosebumps rise along Claire's arms. Because the only other explanations she could think of was that those tears were tears of fear. Eventually, even as Claire tried to go back to what she was doing, the noise was just too distracting. Slamming the brush down on her dressing table, she got up and stuck her head out the door, fully prepared to shout at whoever was crying to shut up. But she saw no one. Puzzled, Claire listened. It sounded like it was coming from further down the corridor. With an impatient sigh, she stepped out of her room and went down the corridor following the noise. As she walked, Claire noticed a sliver of light falling across the floor and opposite wall. Puzzled, she turned, only to see a doorway she hadn't noticed before. She walked up to it when she noticed something very strange and paused just outside the door, peering through the crack between it and the wall. Emily, one of the younger ballerinas, who nevertheless tended to get fairly large parts thanks to her singing voice, was kneeling on the floor, still in her tutu. Her black hair had fallen out of its elegant style, and her big green eyes were wide with terror. Stop crying, the voice said, and a pair of legs appeared within Claire's line of vision. It's annoying. The voice was pitched in a softer volume than usual but Claire recognized that voice. Marielle, another prima ballerina, was something of a rival to Claire. They almost always ended up competing for the same roles. Claire usually won, and Marielle made her dislike of her fairly clear despite never saying a word about it. Just what was going on? But I don't understand, Emily protested, looking up at the older girl. Why do I have to? It's simple enough, I told you. I'll handle everything else. You just have to bring it to her, understand? I don't think you want everyone to know the truth about you, Emily, do you? No, Emily replied, stifling another sob, looking utterly wretched. More tears slipped down her face. Claire was about to leave. If Emily was being blackmailed by Marielle, then that was her own business. It was unfortunate, but what was she supposed to do? Just as she started to draw away though, something else very quickly got her attention. Anyway, what's Claire Travis to you anyway? I doubt she'd be much missed when she's gone, batting her eyelashes at the director and walking around like some freaking queen of the core. It's never been fair that she always gets every lead, is it? I don't know what she does for the director to be so head over heels for her, but you can bet that it doesn't involve any dancing. Emily shook her head, and Claire nearly gasped in indignation before clapping a hand over her mouth. 
How dare Marielle imply she'd slept her way to the top? Or for that brat Emily to agree with her? Won't people find it suspicious if something happens to her before Swan Lake opens? Emily asked, wiping her face with the back of her wrist. How do you plan on explaining it anyway? You'd be the prime suspect. Don't worry about that. I've had a lot of time to think about how to get rid of her. Just do what I tell you. Claire stepped back, the color draining from her face. So not only was Mariella a jealous hag, but now she'd stooped to murder to get what she wanted. And she was blackmailing Emily into helping her. She had to tell the director about this and quickly. She'd be arrested and thrown in prison before the sun was up tomorrow if she hurried. But as Claire stepped back, she forgot about something crucial about the opera house. It was old, and old buildings tend to creak when not attended to properly. The front of the house was kept up to date in the most modern styles for the sake of the customers. But the back rooms, where the dancers, singers, stagehands, makeup artists, and all the other performers lived, were kept in far less lavish conditions. So when she stepped back away from the door, her heel sank onto an old floorboard that let out a horrifically loud creak. Emily's head snapped up. What was that? Marielle was quicker off the mark. In the next moment, the door was flung wide open and the tall brunette stood in the doorway. A peculiar little smile on her face as she took in Claire's horrified expression. Well now, isn't this an interesting turn of events, she cooed. We were just talking about you. Very considerate of you to make yourself known to us. D don't come any closer, Claire stammered, scrambling back to get away as Marielle approached slowly, like a cat stalking a mouse. And let you go running to the director like you always do? I think not. For all her gracefulness, Claire lurched clumsily to her feet and turned and ran down the corridor. She let out a shriek, hoping someone would see what was going on, but nobody seemed to be around, or if they were, they thought better of interfering. Help! Somebody help me! She's insane! Claire screamed, but all that answered her was her own voice. Oh, Claire! sing song Marielle, following the girl at a more leisurely pace. You're almost making this too easy for me. Finally, they had reached a dead end and Claire decided to confront Marielle dead on. She spun around with a scowl, drawing herself up. How so? If you try and kill me, everybody will suspect you. Everybody knows how bitter and jealous you are. Marielle just smiled. I was going to poison your tea. I even supplied it to Emily and arranged to be conveniently away when you succumbed. Then it would have eliminated me as the prime suspect but it turns out none of it will be necessary. What do you mean? Claire faltered, looking wildly around for some kind of weapon Marielle might have spotted to use against her. Even if anybody did hear you right now, they might assume you were being hysterical or practicing or something. Either way, they'll shake their heads and say something to the effect of, silly girl, should have looked where she was going. It's not quite as dramatic as someone like you would prefer, but it's about time you learn that you can't get everything you want. And then Marielle's hands clamped down on Claire's shoulders. Her smile was all teeth and no mirth, though there was a glint of grim satisfaction in her eyes. And then she shoved. Claire had not seen the staircase just behind her, assuming it was a black wall instead of shadows. Her body fell in a graceful arc, hair billowing. Her mouth stretched out in a perfect O oh to scream, but she didn't have time to do so. She simply fell, arms and legs flailing in vain for something to grab onto. There was a sickening crunch as Claire hit the ground and Marielle watched with grim satisfaction. She knew that sound. It meant her neck had broken. Marielle smiled. Goodbye, Claire. <laughs>